this Greg Foss from Me Undies. You got that jeans. How's it going, Greg? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Okay, so first and most important question before you begin. Um, what kind of underwear are you wearing? Right now, boxer briefs. Uh, me undies? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Come on. If you said anything else, I don't know what I would do. Uh, they're, I can go into it a little bit more. They're, uh, they're actually are red. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to show us. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you want to, you could, I mean, you guys can decide. Um, <laughs> so how did me undies start from the beginning? So me undies started... Um, because our founder, Jonathan Shokrian, he, he knew there had to be a better way to buy mm -hmm. um, underwear and basic apparel. Okay. And it kind of started all with this catalyst. He was actually taking a trip to Europe, and uh, he f didn't pack enough underwear, and um, <laughs> he actually had to go and, and purchase some. And he you know, likes good, you know, solid, high-end underwear. Mm -hmm. um, so he you know, went to the department store. He, uh, he got you know, four pairs of, of undies that were all you know, $40 a piece, <laughs> um, which is expensive. And, uh, and then he, you know, once he tried them on at home, um, he you know, realized that they weren't you know, the, the underwear that he thought they were. Okay. They weren't comfortable, and he was like, you know, kind of fed up at that point. Yeah. And that's like kind of, that was a real spark that okay. kind of got it all going. Great. Yeah. So uh, you guys all have all kinds of campaigns and different channels. Uh, what, what different channels do you guys use? Yeah, so I mean, as a young, growing brand, we're constantly testing out new growth channels. Mm -hmm. um, I would say right now, you know, our, our most successful is, you know, Facebook advertising, mm -hmm. um, both like in the news feed and right hand facing. Um, we're testing out Instagram ads. Um, but then we're also, you know, we're, we're scaling and growing really successfully uh, channels like radio, um, mm -hmm. TV, uh, podcasts, like you mentioned. Um, all of those have been doing really great, okay, too. Awesome. And we're going to hear a little bit more about this in your, your presentation, I guess. Yeah. So actually, okay. what I'm going to be going into is more like our, like you mentioned, the earned media. Okay. Um, so, you know, kind of the more creative things that we've come up yeah. with that kind of like helped us get to the point that mm -hmm. we, are, we are at now. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys like what I have to say. Great. Can't wait to hear it. <laughs> the stage is yours. The clicker's over there. Sounds good. So yeah, so what I'm talking about today is how as a small brand, as a startup brand, um, you have to be really creative in the way that, uh, in the way that you, you, you market your products so that you can gain um, earn media uh, that kind of gives that extra added value behind your campaigns. Um, you know, when you're going up against major brands like Calvin Klein or Victoria's Secret, for example, um, there's nothing you can really do to compete with how much they're spending on their advertising. Um, so what we need to do is we need to get that same level of exposure that they get and, uh, and, and not pay for it, <laughs> basically. So, so let's go into uh, you know, so a little bit about who we are. So, um, like I t talked about, we're an underwear and basic appar apparel brand based in Los Angeles, California. Um, what we're doing is, you know, we're really trying to change the way people not only purchase their underwear, but also how they kind of perceive underwear in general. Um, kind of giving it a new personality that, uh, that, that the underwear market really hasn't seen before. Um, you look at brands like Calvin Klein, um, it's very black and white, even in the way that they take their photos, um, literally in black and white. Um, and we wanted to add more fun and more personality and, and kind of take more of a bold approach to it. Um, so yeah, a little bit more background here, and I'll keep this kind of short. But um, you know, yeah, like I said, we're co you know underwear brand, we're an e-commerce brand. Um, so we are direct to consumer. Um, we cut out the middleman. We're able to sell you know underwear that other designers uh, charge about you know thirty to forty dollars. We're able to sell at about half the price at sixteen to twenty. Um, so it's you know high high quality underwear, um, designer quality underwear, but for half the designer cost. Um, and then we're you know also vertically integrated. So, you know, everything that we do is based out of our one warehouse um, office space in Los Angeles. Um, that comes from everything from design to customer service and fulfillment, um, you know, shipping out all the orders around the world. And uh, so we do that all under one roof, um, which is also really cool. Um, and, you know, all of that that we're doing is it's really kind of disrupting what the underwear industry is. Um, so right now, uh, or before, you know, we kind of came along, um, it was, uh, it was, you know, inconvenient, it was, you know, expensive if you wanted to purchase, right, great underwear. Um, there's really only two, um, in the States, there was really only two, uh, two real spectrums. There was the high, you know, high price designer pairs that I was telling you about. And then there's also, on the other side, there's, you know, really expen uh, inexpensive, 
um, you know, cheaper quality underwear that you could get at the, you know, at the supermarket. Um, that wasn't very, uh, it wasn't cool, um, it wasn't comfortable, and it wasn't really desirable. Um, so we knew there was a better way, and we kind of have stepped in that middle ground there where, um, you know, it's really high end, really quality underwear, but for, uh, for a much cheaper price. Okay, so now that the background's out of the way a little bit, um, I want to kind of get into this idea of, the, of earned media. And, and there's a lot of best practices that we've kind of figured out. And keep in mind that there's really no perfect way to do this. Um, but you know, there are you know, a few basic rules that you can kind of stick to, to if you want to go this route with your marketing. Um, and the main root of it all is being aware of your surroundings and knowing what, like, you know, what's going on around you at the time. Um, everything from you know, current events and news stories, uh, trending topics on social media, um, and then even yeah, physical location as well. So like your actual geographical surroundings, um, using all those things to your advantage to kind of get you the, uh, you know, the kind of earned media exposure that you, uh, that you really want out of your campaigns. So I'm going to start with geographical location. So um, just like in real estate, location, 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 um, it's always you know, really important. Uh, so, one of the major things is you know being aware of your surroundings and using what you have in your own backyard uh, to your, your you know to your brand's advantage. So for us, we're based in Los Angeles, and you know Los Angeles is home to some of the biggest stars, celebrities, uh, social media influencers. Um, really runs the gamut the type of you know people that we have in LA that are have massive influences across the world. Um, so it's really you know it's important for us. You know we have to recognize that the fact that we have that in our backyard. And, and be able to kind of take advantage of that and utilize it to our, um, you know, towards our marketing. So uh, one of the things that I'm you know, personally really involved with on a day-to-day basis is, uh, is influencer marketing. Um, so you know, building relationships with people, uh, you know, social media influencers, celebrities, building relationships with them, which is you know, things that because I'm in Los Angeles, I'm able to do on a day-to-day basis since they live there as well. Um, and by building those relationships, you can have them help you know, promote your brand, um, you know, mainly th through social media. So up here is a, uh, a photo of, actually, that's Kylie Jenner. Um, we, uh, we built a relationship with her. She ended up really loving our underwear. And in the end, she ended up posting one photo to Instagram. And that one photo that she posted to Instagram and tagged us ended up getting written up in you know, 40 to 50 different uh, you know, blogs and news websites. Um, it was, uh, it was you know, huge news within the celebrity scene that she was doing this. Um, at the time, she had 18.1 million followers. Um, and that's a lot of eyeballs on your product. Um, so actually, that one post there, um, you combine it with you know, the social media exposure we got and then the, the exposure that linked to our website um, from across the internet, we uh, ended up having our largest traffic uh, site traffic day to date, um, which is pretty insane considering that you can't even link directly to your website from an Instagram post. So hashtag trending. So this goes after, you know, so you have to look after your, you know, geographical surroundings, right? That's more, that's kind of simple, you know, you use what you have right in front of you. Um, now another thing that has to do with location or uh, being aware of your surroundings, however, is, is being aware of trending topics on social media and around the internet and, and you know, having the peace of mind to, uh, to kind of hop on those trends and, and get yourself in the conversation. Um, so there's a few examples uh, that you can see here. So um, hashtag mantis um, is, uh, so there was, I'm not sure if you guys you know, saw this, but there was uh, you know, kind of this social media trend where guys were, you know, stepping out of their shell and, and posting photos to uh, their social media accounts wearing underwear only. And it kind of became this hashtag mantis craze, um, at least in, in, in the States. And, uh, and so being an underwear company, it was, you know, we had to jump on it. So we started creating ads on social. Um, we started putting up photos that were hashtag mantis. And we ended up getting um, some of the highest click-through rates on our uh, social media advertising um, out of any of the other campaigns we had been running. Um, and it was all because we were able to tap into that hashtag. Um, another thing that we've done, and I won't spend too much time going into every one of these campaigns, but uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, um, they, they uh, made an announcement that they were coming, they were, you know, coming out with, uh, with, with new content. And, um, and so we kind of hopped on that trend. It was 
being talked about all over Twitter. And, um, and so what we did was we actually custom tailored the theme song and wrote our own version, uh, making it about the first time you order a pair of MeUndies online. Um, it, like, like, just like the Mantis uh, ad, it actually it did insanely well. Usually when you're creating ads, especially on Facebook, um, you know, you want to keep the copy short, you want to be, you know, have it be to the point. And this was, uh, this was an ad where the copy actually was six, seven paragraphs long. And even with that, um, it was like something that people had never seen before. Um, we were able to, you know, kind of plug into that trending topic at that, of, of that time, and, and it, you know, performed really well for us. Um, now, the, the last one I want to talk about with uh, trending topics is this photo right here. Um, that's Lenny Kravitz. Um, so he actually uh, became a, a pretty big news story for when he, uh, he was on stage wearing leather pants and he actually ended up ripping. And everyone could, find, like, could tell pretty easily that, uh, that he wasn't wearing underwear. Um, and uh, it was a huge news story. All the blogs were picking it up. Um, it, was, it was all over the place. And so we kind of took that and then we combined it with um, the launch of Straight Out of Compton, which is, uh, which is a really successful movie. And they had this great uh, campaign leading up to it where you could create your own meme where um, instead of you know, saying that you were straight out of Compton, you could change you know, the, last, the last word there to make it you know, straight out of wherever it is that you were from um, or if you were actually out of something. So that's the way that we kind of took it. Um, straight out of underwear. Uh, we posted that to our Instagram, we, we tweeted it, and um, because we were able to tap into all these people that were kind of taking advantage of that meme, um, we were one of the only brands to do that. And that kind of stems from us being like very nimble, willing to take risks. Obviously this is somewhat controversial to be a part of, but it ended up being one of the top 10 on a lot of different lists, uh, one of the top 10 uses of the meme, um, which was pretty, pretty amazing. And you know, the really key takeaway with all of these is that relevance leans, leads to these more like earned media impressions. Um, and if you can just be relevant, it's gonna multiply your, your campaign's impressions, you know, five, 10 X at, at the minimum, um, just by being relevant. Um, and that's, that's something that's really important um, when you're you know, really trying to extend your marketing budget and get those impressions that you want. So uh, now when it comes to news stories, we've had success. Um, a lot of major success in NFL partnerships. Um, and it's not because we were looking to be a part of the NFL. Um, it was more that we just kind of saw a new story developing that we thought we could, you know, kind of piggyback on and be a part of. So I won't spend too much time on Joseph. It's, uh, he was uh, an athlete who actually got, um, he actually got arrested for shoplifting a pair of underwear from a department store. Um, and uh, <laughs> it made huge news um, in the States. It made huge news that, you know, why would this guy who's making millions of dollars um, need to steal a pair of underwear? Um, and so we kind of made a joke about it and we sent out a tweet to uh, a big reporter at ESPN saying, hey, if you see Joseph, um, let him know that, you know, we'll pay the fine that the NFL gave him for doing this um, because we hate buying underwear from department stores too, hashtag direct to consumer. Um, <laughs> and uh, and the, the ESPN analyst actually ended up seeing it, and he was you know thought it was a great idea. Um, and you know, next thing you know, we're on the uh, front page of ESPN. Um, so just by sending out a tweet and hopping onto a news story that you know being a young and unafraid brand, um, just from that like nimbleness and quickness. Uh, we were able to get involved in the news story. Instead of just it being about Joseph Randall stealing underwear, it became Joseph Randall endorsing underwear. Um, and so it was, uh, it was a really memorable story. And, uh, and if you can create like a partnership um, that uses a news story, um, you can create a way more, uh, not only relevant, but a more, um, you know, more story-driven campaign. And those story-driven campaigns are what you need to get the earned media value out of them. Now, a very similar story. Um, this one, he didn't get in trouble with the law, but uh, this is Marshawn Lynch, and he is uh, a, one of the biggest uh, running backs in the NFL. He was in the Super Bowl last year, and in the game that you have to win to get to the Super Bowl, he actually, um, as you can see in this picture, he did that obscene gesture where he's grabbing his crotch. And it was, you know, he got a huge fine from it. Um, the NFL said if he did that in the Super Bowl that he would get a $20,000 fine for each time that he did it. 
Um, so in his press conference, he's a very, he's a very uh, irreverent guy. And, um, and, and so his defense was that he wasn't you know, doing an obscene gesture. He was, uh, he was just fit, you know, readjusting his jock strap and, uh, because it was a little bit uncomfortable. And so we kind of saw that as like the perfect opportunity to jump in on this story. Um, so our strategy was, you know, a Super Bowl ad spot, you know, for TV costs $4.5 million for 30 seconds, which is $150,000 per second. There's no way that a startup brand has that kind of money to, uh, to, to get involved in the Super Bowl. So in order for us to get involved in one of the biggest conversations um, in, in media, uh, we have to do it in a more creative way. So Whereas some other brands might shy off from a story like this, we saw it as a great, um, you know, hot topic news story that we'd be able to get organically, um, you know, involved with uh, the Super Bowl at a much lower cost. Um, so after, you know, making it public that we, uh, so the whole strategy behind it, um, once we knew why we wanted to do it, was how do we get involved with the story? We said, um, we sent out another tweet um, and, uh, yeah, that was, you know, the rest was really history. Um, we, we, we tweeted Marshawn uh, personally and we said, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about uh, being uncomfortable. You got much more things to worry about, um, like, you know, the big game. And, uh, you know, you should have a pair of comfortable underwear that you don't have to readjust while you're playing. And, you know, if you get in trouble for doing that in, in the, um, in the Super Bowl, you know, we'll pay $20,000 each, each one, each time that, uh, that you would score, um, we would pay twenty thousand dollars to your charity just as a as a way to give back for for what you're doing. Um, he ended up, you know, being down with it. Um, he scored two touchdowns in uh, in the Super Bowl, so we donated forty thousand dollars to his charity. Um, the impressions that we garnered from this it was all over um, major news outlets, um, both mainstream and sports oriented, because you know the Super Bowl kind of crosses that boundary between um, being not only sports related but also like something that mainstream culture uh, pay, pays attention to. Um, and through all those impressions, we you know we gained over 100 million um, just through earned media alone. Um, so we did spend forty thousand dollars and and donated to charity. But you know if you go back to how um, how much money just one second of a Super Bowl commercial costs, being 150 thousand, we kind of came out on top there. Um, and you know, during the actual uh, during the actual Super Bowl, our direct traffic doubled. Everyone's using second screens. Our Google uh, organic traffic doubled. People were just looking us up, like, who is this brand? How can they do this? Why are they doing this? Um, and then Facebook and Twitter traffic also doubled. And that was actually during the game itself. Um, people are live tweeting, um, talking about the game, what he scored. People were tweeting like, oh, that's another twenty thousand dollars. I mean, he has to give to the charity. Um, so the activity leading up to the game, you know, garnered us, you know, about four million uh, impressions on Twitter, which was pretty amazing for us at the time. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, kind of summar like to summarize everything that I'm kind of talking about. Um, what it really comes down to is being nimble. Um, so, you know, news and trending topics move at lightning speed. So you know, one of the, the things that we have to use to our advantage is the fact that we're we're small and we're quick. And we can kind of hop in on uh, trending topics and news stories, you know, at a, at a moment's notice. Whereas, you know, other big, another bigger brand uh, may have to go through more red tape to kind of get something like that done. Um, acting fast like that is risky. So, you know, that's another reason why we're able to do this because we have a little bit less to lose when it comes to these kind of marketing campaigns. Um, and and the fact of the matter is, you know, I'm talking about a few of the ones that worked, but. Um, there's a few that you know that I won't be talking about in the future um, that didn't really work out, uh, but that's okay. You know that's something that we kind of believe in as a company that it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to learn fast, and um, and I think that uh, you know acting quick and, and taking risks is um, you know that's how you get the big rewards. So um, you know being ambitious and taking risks is is also you know it's kind of our brand philosophy. Um, it's in our you know it's in our, uh, our core values, um, so both internally and in, in how we um, kind of work on a day-to-day -day basis, but also, you know, how we kind of uh, assert ourselves within the market as well. Um, being ambitious, trying to change the way people do things. Um, being unafraid is just, it, it all, that's, you know, me and these core values 101. Um, so, you know, one of, the, one of the other things though is like, none of these things you can plan. You can't plan for any of these things. Um, it's, it's impossible. You, you don't know what the, uh, you know, tomorrow's news story is going to be. 
Um, if you do, you know, let me know. I'd love to find out how you do it. Um, but, but yeah, if, if you can just, you know, pay attention, know your surroundings, know what's going on, um, you know, in the world around you, in your own backyard, uh, on social media, um, you know, you have, you have the chance to kind of hop on these stories when, um, when, uh, you know, right when they happen and, and don't let them pass you by. And, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the the key secrets to you know kind of garnering that earned media that we've we found with with MeUndies. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. So, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, Mika and Connie, do you guys have any questions for Greg? Well, uh, yes, I have a question because I think this is very interesting compared to the complete marketplace uh, theory which we just heard about. You say that it's difficult to plan for the future, but do you in some way still have a, a strategy on how to cope with the, your marketing in the future, and, and, and how do you do that? Um, so I think, right, like I said, it's kinda, it all comes down to really being aware of what's going on around you and having, um, having the, uh, you know, the mindset of you know, if something is happening on social media, you know, our social media team is there to kind of hop on that trend right away. Um, so although we don't know what it's going to be, um, it's all about using, you know, using your, creati your creativity, having like a marketing team that's, that's willing to take risks, and that's how you really kind of keep it going. Um, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but when it, when it you know, shows up on your front door, you just kind of have to roll with it. So, you know, be okay. being, being nimble is... So your strategy is basically is to be very quick. Very quick, yeah. And so there's no strategy at all in a way. What's that? And, and sort of like not really a strategy in a way. Well, yeah. I mean, it is, but... Yeah. So, I mean, we also, we have our, you know, more traditional style of marketing channels mm -hmm. that we spoke at, at the beginning um, that you know are are great for us. But you know when it comes to kind of making those those big splashes uh, and and getting our, our brand name really out there, it, it all it comes down to these kind of earned media okay. uh, projects that we do. Awesome! Thank yeah. you so much, Greg. Another round of applause for him. Yeah.